Today I'm joined by Lucy Danziger, Self Magazine's Editor-in-Chief. Since Lucy became Editor-in-Chief in 2001, Self Magazine has won the National Magazine Award for Personal Service and has been nominated for six other National Magazine Awards. Lucy and I will be discussing the magazine, her career, blogging, and more. So Lucy, how did you get started in magazine publishing? Well, I've always been interested in writing and editing and trying to inspire other people, women especially. So um, at one point I was writing for the Star Ledger and then I went to New York Magazine and then I had uh, various careers including a small stint at the New York Times in the Style News Department. And then um, Condé Nast was launching a women's magazine about being active. And so I launched that with them and uh, that lasted several years. And then uh, that segued into Self, which has really been a great run. It's eight years now and uh, I love it because we inform and inspire. 6.5 million women every month to be their personal best. And Self Magazine has been around for 29 years. We're it's a long, 30, lo 30. long time in the magazine industry. How yeah. do you keep it fresh? Well, what's interesting about Self is it's really evolved in the years that I've been there. Um, we talk to women about the basic personal interests they have. So that's being their best inside, outside, and being a good citizen of the world. So basically, uh, we, we talked to her about fitness, health, nutrition, beauty, style, happiness. Happiness is big because if you know, everything else is going right and you're still not happy, that's an issue. And we do a lot with the internet. So now you can go to self.com and do programs where you can make over a part of your life and the magazine where you really read and get inspired by the photography and the richness of the production. And these two things have a dialogue with each other. Well, that's why I want to get into the whole idea of the online community because you've built a thriving online community and yet you also have the traditional media. Right. What are the metrics of success online? Well, you know, we grow a lot every year. And even though a lot of magazines have seen um, shrinking in this day and age, we actually grew 73% from this year um, as opposed to last year. And the reason is because we allow women to come in and really keep track of their progress. So one of the things we do is we have logs and we have interactive uh, programs. So you can go online and keep track of your fitness, your, your diet, your beauty, anything you want to do online at self.com. And we also have new and fun programs. So like this spring, I think in terms of having a five-star day, and so we created something called the Five Star Day, and it's not counting calories or measuring food. It's very personal. You create your own version of that. And so for me, it's sleeping enough. Yes, who doesn't want to sleep more? <laughs> yes, I need to sleep more. It's eating healthy, so I get up and I have a healthy breakfast. It's working out, so I try to work out before I go to the office, because I know if I don't, it's probably not going to happen later. Um, I try to stretch or do something healthy for my body that's just physically, you know, refurbishing um, to the whole system, and then talking yourself up, not hating yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, in other words, if I were to go to the art department and see that somebody had made a batch of cookies, and I have not one cookie, which would be a fine thing to do, not even two, sometimes I'll have three, four, and rather than saying, oh, I'm just a terrible person, I just ate all those cookies, I hate myself, you know, I'd say, you know, it's okay. You're allowed some cookies, even more than you should have. It's okay, just get over it, move on. Every now and then we overeat or we overindulge or we let ourselves have too many treats. Right. Not to get down on yourself, because that starts that cycle of sort of self-destructive behavior. You know, I had four cookies, so I'm a bad person, so I might as well just you know, blow it completely. And instead, you just say, you know what? It's okay, forgive yourself and move on. So is a prototypical self-reader one who exercises, who focuses a lot on nutrition, who has children. Like, if you were to say this is a prototypical reader, describe who that would be. Okay, so it's a woman in her 20s and 30s and 40s who wants to do a little better today than she did yesterday or wants to do a little better tomorrow than she's doing today. So you're trying to reach your personal goal. But I like to talk about the on-ramps and the off-ramps like a highway. Depending on where you get on, you get off further along. So some women exercise and read self and they want to do more or, or work on their nutrition or work on their skin care. I'm terrible about wearing sunscreen. I've become a new reformed sunscreen wearer, you know, a couple of sketchy moles and you kind of go, you know, I get, I get it, I get it, okay. But you know, for every one of us that doing better is subjective. So uh, you, I would say half of our readers are married. Of those half, 
I mean, so of those married women, half have children. So it's not really about kids. It's not really about your spouse. It's doing it for yourself and saying, you know, I want to do better for me and for who I think I can be when I get it together. And whatever that is for you, it might be, you know, getting organized, saving money, being a little bit um, more well-rounded, being more creative. Like we try to help women be their best inside, outside, and then in the world. What about the idea of the covers? Because many of the models are relatively thin, mm -hmm. or, or in, certainly in shape, mm -hmm. but so many people in the United States are not. Right. Do you feel any sense of duty to try to represent every woman? That's a really good question. I want to inspire women. So thin is not that inspirational. Um, we actually try to choose healthy women. So whether that's Fergie, who's I think very beautiful and not too thin, or Beyonce, who's our next cover, or you know any number of the singers, actresses, or famous people, we try not to go model thin, because that's really tough to achieve. Um, on the other hand, I know women will say, oh, I want real women on the cover, and when you put a real woman on the cover, they don't buy it. So I think- Why there, do you think that is? Well, I was just gonna say, I think there's sort of what we think we want and what we actually want. Um, I think women want to feel that they can aspire to be that person and they are inspired to do better in their own life. So if you show them somebody who is neither inspirational nor somebody they can achieve, you miss the mark. You have to kind of find that sweet spot in the middle where it's somebody you're inspired by but who isn't so unattainable you can't be her. So that's really what I think about. I, I also have a different way of looking at it. I don't think in terms of weight and I don't think in terms of size. I think in terms of I like a sun as opposed to a moon. A sun is somebody who gives off a lot of energy, who says, you know, come on in, you can do it, we can do it together. And she's kind of cheerleading, and she's got a lot of energy coming off the page. A moon is more of a reflector, and she says, look at me, I'm great. And you're the heat reflecting off her. So a moon works better on a high-end haute couture magazine, I would say like a W, where you kind of look at that woman and you go, wow, and you bring her the heat. With self, we're still selling you know, healthy living and that's basically eat your vegetables and exercise and be healthy and wash your makeup off at the end of the day and all the things you <laughs> learned from your mom or somebody who was smart right, enough to right, teach you. Exactly. So we're still kind of saying, you know, it is what it is, there's no pill, there's no magic bullet. So we want somebody who's gonna make it really, really attractive. So when we asked Beyonce and she said yes, she got in shape for her tour, she'd been on the cover when she first went independent from Destiny's Child, and now she got in shape for her world tour, she's so proud of what she did. So she's saying, I work out, I dance, I run, I eat healthy, I'm really strict, I've cut out the fried foods, and Beyonce is basically saying, you can do it too. But let me ask you, would you have put Beyonce on the cover if she had not been in that phase of really being fit and working out. She wouldn't have wanted to do it. So it, it becomes its own self-selecting thing. I mean, one time we asked an actress to be on our cover and she said, no, I'm sorry, I can't, I smoke. I was like, well, who, that's and who was honest. That? It was Lisa Kudrow, long time ago. So I don't know so if she smokes anymore. Lisa, I apologize <laughs> if you're watching this and you quit. Come call me up. So there's certain things that are, in a way, a litmus test to be on the cover. She wouldn't yeah. want to do it. She just said, you know, I just don't feel like I can be the poster girl for health.